Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning to the Drainage District Board of Directors meeting for today, July 29, 2014. The entire court being present, we have a quorum. Anyone sign up under open forum? No, sir. All right. Uh, consent agenda, any concerns? No, sir. We have no concerns. Order? No move. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Right, item four. Item 4A, requesting approval of supplemental agreement number one, the work authorization number 4A with Ted Z Infrastructure Group, Inc. to, re to revise Exhibit D, all fees and costs remain the same. It's just a restructuring of the way they've got their supplemental. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, requesting approval of supplemental agreement number one, the work authorization number 4B was Ted Z Infrastructure Group, Inc. to revise Exhibit D. All fees and costs remain the same. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, request approval of supplemental agreement number one to professional agreement mission and recertification with LNG Engineering. Revision of the project team was to include our right of way services into the supplement into the supplemental. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item five, presentation of scoring grid to the firm's grade and evaluated through the county's pool of professional engineers in connection with professional engineering services. Required for Adult County Drain District number one, Annex Building, Old Precinct four. Three firms were half an associate, SMB Infrastructure and Fulcrum Consulting. Half an associate with a 91, SMB with an 83, Fulcrum Consulting with a 78. This is for going in and getting the mechanical and electrical restructured inside the old building. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, requesting approval of all county drain district number one to negotiate professional engineering service agreement with the number one ranked firm of half and associates for the provision of engineering services as it relates to Adal County Drain District Number One Annex Building Old Precinct 4. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, requesting approval to purchase upgrade software SQL server for the district's accounting program through GSA contract number. GS35F0195JCDW-G in the amount of $2,456.01. Approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D, requesting approval of final negotiated professional agreement, International Bridge Trade Corridor within Precinct 1, with Tesla Infrastructure Group, Inc., for the provision of engineering services required for Precinct 1 roadway system off-site drainage improvements as it relates to interlocal cooperative agreement between Hidalgo County RMA, approved for negotiation by Hidalgo County District Number 1 Board of Directors on February 18, 2014. These are the contracts that the RMA will be reimbursing the district for the provisions of the off-site drainage. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item E, requesting approval of final negotiated professional agreement, International Bridge Trade Corridor within Precinct 2, with our Gutierrez Engineering Corp for the provisions of engineering services required for Precinct 2, roadway systems, offsite drainage improvements as it relates to interlocal, interlocal cooperative agreement with Hidalgo County RMA approved for negotiation by Hidalgo County Drainage Number 1 Board of Directors March 18, 2014. This is in the Precinct 2 area. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Commissioner Flores, we'll be coming probably next week with the one associated with your precinct. Yeah. I know uh, LNG has been working trying to get the con, but everything's already been agreed for everybody. They just haven't got the paperwork to us on it. No problem. Under item six, I believe it was placed on there by uh, the either of oh, um, And that actually, um, item six is related. Oh, I apologize. No, no, no. That, that, that's related to, no, my to the accounting, brother. That's the accounting. I apologize. No, that was not. No, that was not. Well, Laura's problem. here. To Laura, I, I apologize. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, another item. Yes. Item six is in accordance with the Board of Directors meeting schedule of 2014. That was approved last week for two, two meetings per month. Uh, we request approval to process payments after review and audit procedures are completed by the financial officer of the district. Checks will be issued and included in the check register of the, the next available meeting. Well, this bro, is a similar item that the county. I, I, I have a Excuse me? I have a comment on that one. Unlike the county where the auditor is a statutorily created position, the financial officer of the drainage district is not a statutorily created position. So I have some concern about the board designating that authority to a non-statutorily created position. We do have. Then, uh, well. 
Go we, ahead. We also have the county treasurer included in the approval or signature of the check. But the county treasurer is not an okay. officer of the district. So what do you recommend, Steve? I guess my no question. Action. I guess my question is: Can the drainage district wait for two weeks for board approval of their bills? Can we what? I'm sorry. Can you wait, wait for two weeks for approval of bills at the drainage district? Well, it, it's up to us, ain't it, Steve? Well, I mean, uh, I'm thinking, how much backlog will there be as far as payment times? To well, but there's nothing statutorily that. requiring us to do it every week. They're not. No, they're not. And you're not statutorily required to do it in the county every week either. And another thing is, auditors sometimes takes five, six months to pay a bill. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> So we usually, offer. commissioners, we usually sit with around 30 day pay period of paying our bills off. So within two weeks, the board, I think, would still fill in nine, but that's up to the board. That's no problem, Steve. Just continue the way it is. No action on this. Your decision. I'm just saying that I do have some concerns about the financial officer not being a statutorily created position. Well, but we're, they're not going to be here to approve them. I mean, that's the whole purpose of this because we, you know, we're going to have just two meetings a month. Right. I guess my question to the drainage district is, if they pay within 30 days, will skipping a meeting be a problem to, in staying with that 30-day pay period? I, I don't think so. That's my opinion. Sir. I, yeah. I, I would say it would make a difference. What? Well, the it would. It would. It would. It would. Uh, depending on the shift. So why is the county going to wait and the drainage district can't? Why, why would it be a problem? No, the, the county's not waiting. They're issuing checks every week. Are they, brother? Mm -hmm. Or uh, they, they're the, going to be. They're not the no, only thing that we, are going to be approved. Right, no. The, the, the county is processing those checks or those invoices. And have them ready for approval. Uh, that are ready for approval as audited by the auditor's office. Not all checks or not all invoices that are submitted to the auditor's office are processed weekly. Uh, it goes through a process. Whenever the, the check or invoice is ready, then it comes up for approval for the commissioner's court. Well, I don't see anything wrong with, with uh, the way it's being proposed. Any, any questions? Any, uh, any member of the court? The only thing is, uh, can we do it? Judge? Well, from what Steve is telling us, it, it is up to us. He's concerned that uh, there might be something prohibiting it, but he's not aware of anything at this point. Can we say just follow the counties, you know, whatever the counties yeah. do? That's what you're proposing, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yes. I could email everyone a copy of the check register. If, and you know, Valde, you, 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 are, you, you're, are you telling me that the uh, checks for the county are being made, but they're not being processed out, and they're not given out till the, the county, the auditor approves everything, or they're just hold, on hold? No. The, the, what I'm saying, Commissioner, is that there is a deadline uh, Thursday morning Invoices have to be submitted. Not necessarily processed. Ready to be. Those that have gone through their audit. There's been instances where they've got a question on an invoice. Uh, we submit it on one week, and a couple weeks later, it gets resolved. And so uh, that invoice actually was processed two, three weeks after it was submitted. Again, the, the point I'm trying to make is only those invoices or, or, or uh, warrants against the county uh, that have been processed and are ready for payment are the ones that are being brought to commissioner's court uh, for action. All those that have not been processed or not ready for payment are not brought before commissioner's court. And is that what you're proposing to do? Yes, after all items have been reviewed and audited. Valde, do, does the county actually release the checks once the auditor? Uh, if they've been approved by commissioner's court after they've been processed and duly audited, yes, they are released after approval by the court. But isn't uh, that the issue because we are not meeting every week? We're right. not approving it every week, but every two weeks. Right. Valde, how many, how many weeks are you going to be off? I mean, it's just one on, one off, one but on. But for one. how long? Oh, this was uh, just for the uh, remainder of the year. How much is that? How many weeks? Oh, is that? we've got um, August, September, October, November, December. We've got five ten. months. Five. So it'd be five meetings. No. Ten. No, no, no. It would be uh, ten meetings. Uh, 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 yeah, right. two, uh, two a month. Ten. Ten. Right.
Why do you feel you need it? Uh, because vendors will be calling. Um, oh, that's a good reason, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. They want to get paid. I mean, we can try it, and then, and then you know, I, you know, most I, of the, most I, I of the think the vendors should notify. But it's here to it. It shouldn't I mean, be. A problem. Most of the co companies out there pay once a month. <clears throat> you know, I, mean, I don't see why we have to pay every week. Okay, you I know, know. I get paid once a month. Sometimes certain items once require every... that the court approve uh, an item. I mean, we could <clears throat> maybe look into the procedures and and change some of those, or but that's just a. Can, can we be brought back, back more, next week? Can we bring back a more detailed? Yeah, bring vote? it back next week, no judge. What do you think? Yeah, I think okay. we need to look at it a little closer and okay. try to address some of Steve's concerns. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So no action. No action on number six. Uh, we have nothing under closed session. As the board wishes to entertain one. Need a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. It is 9.23, we got, uh, we'll be starting our meeting at 9.30. Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning to a meeting of the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court for today, July the 29th, 2014. The entire court being present, we have a quorum. Please join us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the blessings that you bring us. But the world is in trouble, dear Lord. We can't seem to find any peace. So at least let us have peace in our families. Please, dear Lord. Uh, have patience with us because we don't always do the right thing. Please protect these people that are starting to work together for all of us. Uh, take care of them, take care of their health. Um, help everybody work together so we have good things for this county. And we ask this, oh, and dear Lord, please send rain. Um, you've sent a little bit, but we need some more. I know we're never satisfied, but we need more rain, dear Lord. And we ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hilda, do you have a copy of the resolution for 6A? All right, under our consent agenda, any concerns? Judge, I would like to ask that. Uh, Consent agenda item 11C, as in Charlie, and 11F, as in Frank, be pulled for discussion. Move for approval, excluding 11C and 11F. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. On uh, agenda item, are you going to cover them already? Or? Not the first one. <clears throat> okay. 11. Agenda item 11C, Judge, uh, we need price verification of the optional items. It was not attached, and uh, I'm not sure if purchasing uh, is going to. This was, oh, okay. This, uh, this item 
was, uh, was sent to me after the draft had been sent to me, and I responded to it separately. We have had discussions with the auditor's office staff and the Comptroller of Public Accounts, the uh, Smart Buy Division, through one of their contracts managers, and I am going to ask that the court approve this subject to the verification concur uh, concurrence between the auditor's office and ourselves. We feel we're almost there, but uh, I believe we can, I can recommend that we proceed to award subject to that verification. Because under the contract that they have, it is permitted, these additional accessories, but uh, we're not very clear on the verification yet. So I ask that you approve subject to that verification process. Any questions? If not, entertain a motion to approve. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. The other one is item F. Yes. Uh, and that inadvertently uh, was placed on the consent agenda. So I ask that we take it up separately. This is 11F, which is 45606. This is a requested exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas local government code 262024A4, a professional service. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are presenting the scoring grid for the purposes of ranking by commissioner's court of the firms graded and evaluated through the county's approved pool of professional geotechnical testing materials testing services. And that is Isagirre Engineering. Give me a second here. I need to get to my second page. At an 80, MEG Engineering at 86, and PSI Engineering at 80. Uh, does the court wish to rank number one, and then we will select two and three by drawing lots. Second. So one would be the highest court, yeah. which is MEG. Okay, right, then those, we can... we've got a motion, need a second. Okay. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. If the court would... Uh, I'm going to hide you. The two, the two, uh, it's, okay. There's two of them. Put, put one in each hand. Put one in each hand. Don't show them to me, just put one in each hand. Okay, pick up your left hand. That's the one. Just read it. Yeah. <laughs> show the record that's PSI and over here I'll open this up Isaguirre would be three PSI would be two and Isaguirre would be three does the court uh, the court take action on those rankings please Second. those in favor say aye aye, aye. motion aye. carries that is all I have thank you all right thank you that you, was want, it. Uh, you don't want the authority to uh Oh, the authority, the authority to enter negotiate. into negotiations with the number one ranked firm of MEG to commence. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. All right. At this time, I'm going to take an item out of order. We're going to move to item 6A. It's a resolution honoring Aurora G. Gonzalez Cavazos, who celebrated 102 years of life on Friday. July the 18th, 2014. Three years ago. Yeah. We honored this young lady three years ago, right before she hit her 100th birthday. And she, she has every intent of coming back in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Judge Garcia and Commissioners. On the agenda is a resolution in honor of a truly inspirational lady, Mrs. Aurora Gonzalez Cavazos. Mrs. Cavazos celebrated her 102nd birthday on July 18th. 
She's not only an icon of longevity, but is a pillar of wisdom and moral strength. Mrs. Cavazos is joined for this honor by Mrs. Sonia Lial, her daughter, Mrs. Belinda Thatcher, her daughter, and Mrs. Angelica Garcia, her sister. This amazing woman has had the unique privilege of seeing Hidalgo County, our state, country, and the world grow from a time when she and her family traveled in a covered wagon to jetting to Europe on a vacation. She was eight years old when the 19th Amendment allowed women to vote and was one of only a few women in her community to graduate high school. In addition to a lifelong held belief instilled in her by her father in the value of education, she's also had a strong moral code. In fact, she helped raise funds to build the first Catholic church in La Jolla, which earned her the title of Queen of the Church. She's a source of wisdom and love for her family and an icon for our county. The resolution recognizes and honors Aurora Gonzalez Gavazos as a lifelong resident of Hidalgo County and that she be extended warmest wishes for continued happiness and good health. Speaking on behalf of the Cavazos family is Ms. Sonia Lial. Mrs. Sonia Lial. Yeah. And here's the resolution. Oh, thank you. Can it to your mouth? Uh, I want to thank the County of Hidalgo, the court, <coughs> for honoring our mother. Um, just all I can say is thank you so much. She's very thrilled and adding to her collection on her wall of all these resolutions and stuff. Thank you. Motion. Move for approval. Second. Ed. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. I asked this young lady is my aunt. <laughs> the lady next to her is my mother. They are from Tabasco, Benitas area. Um, I wanted to find out what what is it that caused her to live this long, and uh, she attributes it to uh, eating well and walking. And her journey, and you know, her mind is totally there at her age, and we're very very proud. Okay, sorry about that. I do want to make sure that I repeat that this young lady is my aunt, and the young lady next to her is my mother who is the youngest in the Gonzalez family from the Tabasco, La Jolla area. 1931 graduate of La Jolla High School, attributes her longevity, her long life to uh, eating well. She didn't eat any kind of fat, fatty foods, and she did a lot of walking. And obviously took care of herself and uh, wants to be here the, uh, on, to celebrate her 110th birthday with us. And we're hoping she makes it. But thank you. Aquí van a andar todavía por, por un tiempo, ching. Did, did uh, Representative Martinez come in? All right, then we'll go ahead and move on to uh, our open forum. We have one presenter, Opal Billman. Good morning, my name is Opal Billman. As the result of a petition for divorce, I have been held in police-enforced false imprisonment for 18 years in the United States of America. Is anybody other than me outraged about this? 
Why am I being confined off land I own? Extortion. To produce, to procure a divorce, one must petition the court and submit the community property for a fair division between the two owners. The court owns no part of the community property and cannot make judgments that place the community property at risk of loss to the owners. The court is babysitting the property for the owners and has the responsibility to return it in a fair divorce settlement between the two owners in the same condition it was received. As if it justified the court doing as they pleased with our community property, the court determined our community property could not be divided. A corporation was organized and the court awarded all of our community property to the corporation. I have never heard of anything so outrageous. The court's responsibility was to divide this private property between Joe and me and give it back. There is no law in this country that allows the court to take everything we own. That's why my confinement, to keep my hands tied and me out of the way. Extortion. My civil rights are being violated under amendments one, four, five, six, eight, 13, and 14. An existing law has been relegated to the trash can. The community property law in the state of Texas is all property acquired during the marriage belongs equally to both spouses, half and half. Also, when Joe died, the law is the case must be dismissed, which, since actions of the court are inappropriate to the law, disposes of them. The court decisions are moot and our community property passes to Texas state law. Under Texas state law, all property owned by Joe Billman when he died became the estate of Joe Billman. The three heirs of Joe Billman own equally the estate of Joe Billman. Because there was no division of our community property, the estate of Joe Billman and me now has four owners. The court claims to have sold $280,000 of our excess land with no value from, for a street from this trumped up corporation and the corporation is keeping our mineral rights. Who got the taxpayer's money and who is claiming our mineral rights? I want an official document that this divorce case is over which means I am no longer confined and our property is re released from the control of the court to the owners. Thank you. Okay, at this time we're gonna take an, uh, another item out of order, item 15A, a resolution to be presented by our state representative, Mr. Armando Mando Martinez. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Always an honor and a privilege to be here, especially when we're recognizing such a honorable inner, uh, individual uh, who has done so much not only for the Latino community, but for the community of Alamo. And uh, on behalf of the Texas House of Representatives uh, and your state representative, myself, Armando Martinez, I'd like to read a resolution that we have put together in his honor. And the resolution reads as follows. Whereas the Honorable Cruz Salanis, a longtime public official and civil rights leader in Alamo, has made lasting contributions to the people of that city. And whereas Mr. Alanis achieved a historic victory in 1967 when he became the first Hispanic mayor of Alamo, he served in that office until 1969, and again from 1979 uh, through 1979. He further benefited his fellow citizens in the position of city commissioner which he held from 65 to 67 and from 1981 to 1985. And whereas throughout his time in office, Mr. Alanis worked tirelessly for the betterment of this community, his efforts were instrumental in the construction of the new city hall and water tower, as well as in the creation of the new sewer and water plants. In addition, he helped to increase public safety by expanding the police and fire departments. 
And whereas this esteemed Texan has also given back to his community through his involvement in a number of organizations, including the boards of the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council, Head Start, Salvation Army, and the American Red Cross South, Tex South Texas chapter, and whereas a champion of civil rights, Mr. Alanis helped to end the system of segregated schooling in his community, and together with other early Latino leaders, he paved the way for Hispanics throughout the Rio Grande Valley to serve in public office. And in all his endeavors, he has promoted social and economic inclusion. And whereas Cruz Alanis has immeasurably enhanced the quality of life for his fellow Alamo residents, and his achievements will continue to resonate in the city for years to come. And now, therefore, be it resolved that Cruz Alanis be commended for his service to the people of Alamo, and he be extended sincere best wishes for the future and his success. As your state representative, I'd like to present this and sign Armando Mando Martinez of District 39. Congratulations, Mr. Alanis. And judge and commissioners, uh, as they say in the infomercials, and that's not all. Uh, the final thing I'd like to do is we uh, had an official Texas flag flown over our Texas capital in honor of Mr. Alanis for all his sacrifices he did, especially for us and our civil rights and continuing to fight for us and being a leader. May God bless you, Mr. Alanis, and may God bless Texas. Thank you. Say aye. 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 Motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge, Commission of Court, I want to thank you for this appreciation for the things that I have done in the past. I have learned and I have learned to forgive and to be forgiven by those that I have hurt because in politics, when you are in making a decision, somebody held horse and somebody held gloves. So we got to remember those that get the good things and those that get the, the bad things. So I want, I want to recognize the county as a whole. I want to recognize the, the commissioners as a whole. And I want to recognize the people who work for the county, uh, for the public schools, and everybody that we have, uh, to, have tried to help, and those that have helped themselves. So I think they are very glad, even though that I have suffered a lot from my enemies who, who was opposed for the change of the county, and for those that were, that were opposed 
to the tiny state of Texas. I'm glad that I was, in, I was in the mine where nobody could hurt me but myself. And I'm glad that my children and, and the people that, that were close to me helped themselves. So I wanna, I wanna thank you for this opportunity to remember the things that I have done and the things that you are doing and the things that we have to do. Thank you very much. This is, this is the thing that I for myself from that. I, I didn't have no accident, so I didn't get hurt by nobody. I hurt my mother when I fall down. Well, I want to make a statement that uh, I've known Mr. Alaniz all of my life. I grew up in Alamo my, from 48 to 59. He was a barber at uh, the barber shop there in Alamo. He, I had the privilege of being one of the few people he would allow to go in and shine shoes at his facility, at his business, but uh, we were proud of him when uh, he started getting very actively involved in uh, the Hispanic uh, civil rights movement, as we can phrase it as such. It was, the 50s were very difficult times for members of the Hispanic community, economically and politically, but uh, he, he was one of the individuals that founded an organization called PASO, Political Association of Spanish-Speaking Organizations. And uh, he was very, very actively involved in, uh, in that effort. And I know that uh, his efforts, along with individuals like Leo J. Leo and, and people that were growing up and were working and doing what they were doing during that difficult time, uh, have resulted in many of the positive changes. So, Mr. Alanis, thank you for the work and the efforts that you have done. Next, uh, next item, item 6B. Well, here we are again. It's, um, it's really wonderful. This item is an acknowledgement of receipt of an award that Mrs. Chapa is holding in her hands. It's always good when Hidalgo County receives statewide recognition, and that's what this agenda item is all about. Uh, Hidalgo County received the Texas Association of Municipal Information Officers Award for Excellence thanks to the work of this young lady, Ms. Jackie Trevino, the Multimedia Coordinator in the Public Affairs Division. Hidalgo competed against municipalities with populations over 200,000 and there were more than 300 entries. Jackie's video was selected from 80 finalists and it featured precinct two uh, Commissioner Tito Palacios Precinct. Congratulations are in order for our extra extraordinary video, videographer, producer, Jackie Trevino. No actions required, but um, I'd just like Jackie to say a few words, please. Hello, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank um, Commissioner Tito Palacios and his staff, um, including Mr. Silguero, Erica Zamora, and Carlos Hasso. They were very helpful in providing me the information and the tools I needed to make this video a success. Um, I was driven around all through the precinct, went to all the different areas, sanitation and roads and colonias, uh, filming all the different um, things that the precinct has to offer for its residents. So I made this seven minute video that was featured during their town hall meetings to showcase um, everything that the precinct's doing now and what they're gonna be doing in the future for them. So I really like to thank them for their collaboration. Um, I'd like to also thank um, the judge and um, his staff for their continued support and um, my director for her continued encouragement. Thank you. And the name of the video was? Uh, the name of the video was uh, Working For You, Hidalgo County Precinct 2, Working For You. Take an action. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries.
right, item 6C. Good morning, Judge Bobby Villarreal with the County Judge's Office. Discussing consideration and approval of the memorandum of understanding between Hidalgo County, City of Edinburgh, City of McAllen, City of Mission, City of Far, and the University of Texas System for the Medical School. Uh, last week, uh, we went before you. Uh, I think we had approved the, uh, the uh, MOU as, a, as to form, and uh, Steve said that we should bring back the dates. In speaking to the cities, they had agreed on October 15th as the date to make the transfer. So. Need action on this? Yes, sir. Yes. Judge. Move. Yes, sir. I have a, a point of information regarding this uh, particular item. Uh, the, um, the MOU commits the county to provide $1 million to the University of Texas system beginning October the 15th. However, the $1 million would only be provided after the, a contract or agreement is executed with the system. That's the number one uh, issue. The other one is that the, uh, that the according to this agreement, the MOU, the, com the county's commitment may continue even after the taxing hospital is created if the district does not accept or continue the county's commitment under the MOU. I think last time you were, you indicated that once the district is in place that we no longer have to provide them the million dollars, but the MOU is not clear on that. It says well, that, believe me, that, that's the understanding. But uh, that's not what it says. It well, says, but that's what the, the if we, if the referendum, if, if the, if the uh, hospital district is approved, that's going to be part of the, of the, uh, language that's contained in the hospital district. Okay. Because, again, the MOU says that once a district is created, that you don't have to pay it only if the, the district is going to pay it. So if they decide not to pay it, then you'll be responsible, according to the MOU that, that you're approving. Well, that's probably true, but, I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, who's not going to want to keep from paying those $5 million, you know? So you're saying once you execute the agreement, you will put language in that? Uh, but we that did right? commit, Mr. Ofrancio, to this uh, $5 million a year between these different cities in order to, uh, to have this medical school created and established and the first two years being established here in Hidalgo County for the obvious and various benefits. Uh, you know, I want you to know and the community to know that since uh, we entered into this agreement, $348 million have been approved that came out of the Permanent University Fund towards uh, our local Pan American University, our now University of Texas Rio Grande Valley facility for new construction and, uh, and various other things. But that's $348 million to date, and that's less than a year. Uh, we need action. If Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 7, Mr. Guerra. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Uh, there is no action under item 7A1 and 2 unless there is action to be taken further down the agenda. Item 7B, I'm going to ask Mr. Palacios to come to the podium. Uh, we do have an update on the renovations of the uh, former administration building, first and second floors. Mr. Palacios. Yes, sir. Good morning, Honorable Judge, County Commissioners, members of the community, Mr. Guerra. My name is Alex Palacios, representative of Prodigy Construction Management, presenting today on Hidalgo County Court Administration Renovations, first and second floor. I understand you have a busy schedule and agenda, so I will try to move uh, fairly quickly. Uh, progress report status on the project, first and second floor. Attached uh, on your screen there, and for all to view, you have uh, additional um, uh, progress on the first floor where the continuance of the walls, the sheet rock, the, dry, the metal studs are up and going. The air conditioning is in, uh, moving in progress. Um, the floors have been uh, uh, surfaced uh, for evenness. Uh, currently, definition of fire barriers are uh, taking place, um, and, and that's been in, in our uh, talks for the last week or so. The drywall, tape and float, and primer is being uh, uh, coordinated and installed. Another view of another angle. Because this building is two stories and very wide in magnitude, it's very difficult to get one shot and get a good view of everything. So I've taken several shots at different areas. As you can see the areas, the picture to your left uh, is actually the seating for county commissioners. That's exactly where you'll be seating in the future. Uh, that is what it looks like during construction. The walls, air conditioning, lighting is taking shape form. We do have power. Um, the picture to your left is the offices. 
uh, for the district attorney's area. That's in progress, as you can see. Again, I've always stressed it, the cleanliness of the project is always critical and important to me, as it, be, as it should be to all. Um, as you move on to the second floor, as you can see the tape and float, the building, the structures, the walls are taking shape where now one can see where whose office is going to be, where and what size. Uh, again, tape float primer is, is ongoing, as you can see, on the second floor. The uh, co construction workers have all the materials laid out. That's not a dirty site. That's just all the materials being laid out for the, for the installation, the, stu uh, the materials, the tape and float, the, the, sheet, the drywall, et cetera. Again, this is a different angle. This is towards the uh, north side of the building and the west side of the building of, of the offices of the DAs. The infrastructure, again, the, plum the plumbing is in ongoing continuous. These are change orders that were approved by this particular council and moving forward of their installation and their progress. This is another view of all the electrical panels or some of the electrical panels for the first and second floor. Again, the neatness is, is uh, closely paid attention to, the electrical wiring, the junction boxes. It's all coming to flourishing. It's coming together uh, as, as the project moves forward. I'm sorry. Uh, state change order status, uh, RFIs, ASIs are, as you know, are ongoing and constantly moving at a rapid pace. We do have lots of coordination and meetings with the owner, specifically Mr. Ramos, uh, Mr. Dan Flores with the maintenance, Wilson Construction, and the architect. Uh, the issues that happened recently with the air conditioning, they're somewhat overlapping with the construction project, but they are being addressed and coordinated with Mr. Guerra's office. Again, as always, uh, this is a snapshot that's included in your presentations to give you a brief summary, summary and overview of the who, the what, the where, the why of the project and where it is today and where it stands. I do apologize for its fine print, but every detail specific, uh, its, its accounting is all included in the snapshot. This is a timeline. We're still moving forward on schedule as presented the previous before. Again, the contract sum was 3.3 million. We've paid out to date 1.9 million. We have a remaining balance of approximately 1.5 million. So all in all, we're moving closer and closer towards February, and uh, we still have quite a bit of money left in the kitty. If there's any questions in regards to the presentation, gentlemen, I'll be happy to address those now. Target date? When's the target date? Thank you. When is the target date? We're looking for February of the first couple of weeks of February, Mr. Uh, Cuellar, Commissioner Cuellar. Thank you. You ready for that, Valde? Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, we were hoping that we would get this completed this year, but all as right. the court has been well aware of all the unforeseen little uh, hiccups we've had, uh, but it's still, it's gonna be uh, hard it's still to trudging along. We've been here for years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be ready come February. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, October, huh? I'm sorry? You said that it was going to come on time and under budget by October? October? Of this year? Of this coming year? 2014. Well, that was the original plan, target right? date, though. I think that's it was what a target saying. date. We, we had this building, as, uh, uh, I'll echo the words from Mr. Guerra, we've had some, not hiccups, but uh, unforeseen conditions, Delays. for example, that have raised uh, the, the uh, um, pipes that needed to replace that were there like 20, 30 years, the sanitary sewer lines that nobody saw as to, but the good thing is I think Commissioner Flores says, I just don't want it smelling like that anymore. That, that problem has been completely solved. So these are things that a contractor or a designer can, unless they have x-ray vision, then, then uh, but well, uh, I think we're moving pretty good on target. There were also quite a few uh, delays caused by the architectural issues. But those have been addressed, and um, we've been moving along, and we moved, well, I guess it's a four, November, December, January, four months after the date that we initially thought we were going to have a, as a completion date. That's correct. And a final note, uh, it, it just came to my attention that the OWLs are, are, would like to uh, visit the job site. As a construction manager, I would like to run it with the general contractor first because he is the... Uh, operating officer for that uh, project as for the construction. I believe in 100% transparency as we all do, but I'd like to run some checks and balances to make sure that uh, we're okay with that. Other than that, if, if, if everything's a go, we have no objections of entertaining the owls to do a very short and brief visit only because it's a very high, intense, uh, and dangerous area 
um, uh, for this area. So if the commission has no objection, I think we may be looking for Tuesday of next Tuesday, week. Tuesday, yes. But I'll run the checks, checks and balance first uh, for right. their own safety. Thank you. Mr. Palacio, there's been discussions about uh, approval of architectural invoices. I was wondering, are you involved in the approval of those invoices or not? Uh, I, I don't particularly, per se, uh, uh, view the invoices of the uh, architect, but I do view and evaluate all invoices of the general contractor. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Item 8, our HR department. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. Tax Office approval to delete the two regular full-time positions and create two regular full-time positions as follows. Delete slot 0022, Deputy Clerk 2 at 36,020, auto allowance at 1,500. Delete a position 57, Deputy Clerk 1 at 27,213. Create slot 158, Administrative Assistant 3, at 33,233 with an auto allowance of 1,500. Create slot 159, Deputy Clerk 2 at 30,000. Approval to revise salary schedule. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Well, this is going to uh, require additional funding? No. No. No, sir. That's what I was looking at. I don't think mm -hmm. so. No, it's a total wash, and it does fall in line with the uh, uh, similar like positions in their office. So, just change your vibe. Yeah. Right. Thank you. It's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That covered. That motion covered one and two. Right? Yes. All right. Thank you. Item nine: Our county clerk. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. And everybody in attendance this morning's Commissioner's Court meeting. My name is Sandra Solis, and I'm here on behalf of Mr. Arturo Guajardo, our Hidalgo County Clerk, and I'm kindly requesting the selection of the 2014 Grievance Committee members. Um, under Local Government Code Section 152.014, the Salary Grievance Committee will be composed of the County Judge, the Sheriff, the County Tax Assessor, County Treasurer, County Clerk, District Clerk, county attorney or criminal district attorney. The county judge is a chairman of the committee but is not entitled to vote. So we are asking for the selection of three public members so that uh, we can provide the necessary nine voting members to the committee. We are also requesting- How, how many members, public? Nine. No, no, public members? Three. Okay. Three public members. Um, and we're also requesting for six alternates uh, just to be chosen, just in the event that the individuals chosen decide to decline. three. That's what we need. Okay. The first one is Celia Ibarra, 4218 East Texas, Edinburgh. Second one is Eduardo Jose Reigada, 2004 Fair Oaks Drive, Mission. The third one is Michael Alvarado, 216 West 7th, San Juan. How many? Six more. Six more. The next six will be the alternates. Six more. I forgot to tell. Number four, Jackie Randall Job, 501 West Orange Avenue, Edinburgh. Number five, Jaime Javier Villarreal, 343 Roundup Circle, Edinburgh. Number six is Luis Felipe Leon, 1317 Cantera Road, Far. Number 
Seven is Berta Pastrana, 1316 La Cantera Avenue, McAllen. Number eight is Maria Perales, 709 Minnesota Road, San Juan. And the last name is Noel Arturo Zamora, P.O. Box 75, Sullivan City, Texas. That did it? That's it. Yeah. Okay, we need a uh, we'll motion approve. to approve we'll those approve. names. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Number 10, our sheriff's office. Judge, commissioners, Richard is in the sheriff's office, Dow County, on behalf of our sheriff, Eddie Guerra. Under 10A. Supplemental Operation Stone Garden Grant 1284 is number one is decision authorization and approval to execute the Operation Stone Garden 2012 Supplement Grant subrecipient and local agreement from the Governor's Division of Emergency Management, Texas Department of Public Safety between the County of Hidalgo and the Texas uh, Parks and Wildlife. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor <clears throat> say aye. 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 Motion carries. The number two is approval certification of revenues by the uh, county auditor for the FY 2012 Supplemental Operation Stone Garden Grant. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The number three is approval to appropriate the following uh, state budget for awarded amount pursuant to subrecipient and local agreements with the County of Hidalgo for the Operation Stone Garden Grant from the Governor's Division of Emergency Management, Texas Department of Public Safety. Is Texas Parks and Wildlife Division of $292,089 with 60 cents. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Under 10B, it's under 2012 Operation Stone Garden Grant 1284 is uh, number one is authorization approval to accept additional monies under the 2012 Operation Stone Garden Supplemental Grant. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The number two is the approval certification of revenues by the county auditor under the uh, 2012 Operation Stone Garden Supplemental Grant. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Under number three is the approval to appropriate the following budget for additional awarded uh, amounts pursuant to additional monies moved to County of Hidalgo under the 2012 Operation Stone Garden Supplemental Grant for the, from the Governor's Division of Emergency Management, Department of Public Safety. Under the Sheriff's Office, uh, $12,921.60. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Captain. Under C. Captain, under Mr. the, uh, under the uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife Division, who is going to be responsible for ensuring compliance with the grant funding conditions? Under the uh, MOU, which uh, we don't have right now, it's currently on the way. Okay, so you're going to spell out who's going to be yes, responsible for absolutely. For okay, thank you. Go ahead. Under 10C, authorization and approval of cell phone upgrade plan through the county's membership authorization under the contract DIR SDD 1777 through, uh, there's a, there was a typo in Sprint, and it'll be AT&T, if I may make that for the record. Not Sprint, but AT&T Mobility. For 81, pulled uh, under the government national 300, including 80 time minutes, unlimited data of $50 a month, total estimated of $4,050 per month. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. That's all I have, Judge Commissioner. Thank you very much. I understand that there's about a million more dollars coming this year than last year? Yes. For the Stone Garden Grant? Yes, sir, that is correct. How are they going to be divided? Uh, that's uh, we're we're currently we submitted a budget to, to FEMA from for everybody, but there hasn't we haven't received the proper authorization right. or the approval. And everybody, yet. those being the cities here in the county. Yes, who are participating? Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Item 11, our health department. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Morning, Eddie Olivares, Hidalgo County Health Human Services. Item 11A, sir, uh, discussion and action, including but not limited to health care funding district and or ex expenditures. I have no action or information to report unless you have any questions. 
Item B, discussion uh, in action, uh, under indigent health care program. A discussion action under indigent including but not limited to indigent health care program and or 15 waiver and expenditures. I have no action or uh, updates unless you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item, item 12, emergency management. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Oscar Montoya, uh, County Judge Ramon Garcia's office. On uh, item 12, I'm requesting consideration and authorization for Hidalgo County Emergency Management to apply for the FY 2015 State Homeland Security Program and Law Enforcement Terrorism Prevention Activities grant from the state uh, administrative agency. Um, basically, <clears throat> as you all have seen in the news, we've had uh, several incidences that has required our region to work together and to uh, try and uh, come up with plans to attack something uh, um, all in one, uh, uh, on one radio system. Uh, in talking to some of the smaller cities, uh, along the expressway and also on 107, the Delta area, um, uh, they still are not on our system. Um, the, this system, although it was heavily supported by Idaho County, we're still at below 60% on the system, while Cameron County, Idaho County are 100%. So basically what we did is uh, we met with these cities and saw what the issue was. The bottom line is they just, it's uh, difficult for them to purchase the entire system all at once. So we located this grant at the home with the HSAC committee and uh, one of the requirements of the grants is that it be regional con uh, that it be a regional in concept so the only or the best option was for all of us to come together and that one agency put in for the grant and that would be Dago County this is a hundred percent match um, so it would only be a, a temporary the funds that we would be using I've already met with the people from budget um, also, there's a concern, uh, I believe, on the audit about, uh, about the grant not being filled out. At this time, I'm not prepared to fill it out. I'm simply asking for permission to move forward in applying for it because it's going to take a little work with the cities. So move. Okay. I think the, the judge, that's one of the concerns that, that I have is that the completed application has not been submitted. And I believe there's a deadline of uh, August, August the 8th. 8th. So uh, I don't know if there'll be a meeting before then, but uh, bottom line is that we can't tell whether uh, what exactly is going to be included in this application since it's not filled out completely. And, and basically, the, uh, at the time that the auditors or that there's any funding uh, going to be involved in this, it would be at the time of accepting the grant. At this point, there's no funds. There's nothing been awarded to us. It's simply an application process so that we can go and make our presentation to the group. Um, other than that, there's no fiduciary responsibility on the part of the county until we accept the grant, which is still next year, probably. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 13, Urban County. Well, you got, well, you got oh, I'm sorry. We got action on A and B. Oh, one yeah. Two. Yeah. yeah. We have a motion, motion and a second. second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, uh, did y'all take number two, too? Yes. yes. Okay. One and two. Thank you very okay. much, Judge Commissioner. Scott. Item 13, Urban County. Morning, Judge and Commissioners. Morning, sir. First item is the Urban County Program is requesting award of bids and bids of and approval of contracts with A1 installation for the demolition and reconstruction of the following. Number one, one unit in the city of Mercedes, one unit in the city of Westlaco, and one unit in the countywide area. Total contract amount is 172100 to A1 installation. Move for approval. Second. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Tony. Uh, next item is the Urban County Tony. Program. Excuse me. Tony. Tony. Yes. Mayor. The yes. one on uh, County White, where's the location of that? It's in the Mercedes area, Commissioner. There's uh, two in West Laco and one in the Mercedes uh, area. So there's two? There's three. three one County White. That's one I'm asking, aren't they? Where is it at? It's outside the city of Mercedes, and I can't give you that. I mean, there, the address is here, Judge, uh, Commissioner Pero. It's right outside the city of Mercedes, within the uh, extra territorial jurisdiction. Okay. Go ahead, sir. The Urban County Program, we have a city of Progress is requesting approval and award a best and final negotiated contract with Javier Hinojosa Engineering Consultant Engineers in the amount of $23,810, utilizing CWG fiscal year 25, Street Improvements Project. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And I can get that uh, information for you. 
uh, commission. Okay. All right. Item 14, our elections office. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. First item is um, an update to let you all know that uh, Progreso is holding an election right now. And uh, election day will be August 9th. And early voting will uh, end on Tuesday, August 5th. So anyone listening today and uh, uh, residing in the city limits of Progreso, we invite you to go and participate in uh, the city of election. So please head out there. You still have time to head out there and vote for the city election for Progreso. Also, you have been handed an item that will be on the agenda for Commissioner's Court on August 12th. We will be asking for your approval to participate in a pilot program with uh, the uh, very uh, involved uh, advocacy, uh, Alliance Advocacy Program, which is ACT. They are uh, trying to get involved in, in going into our high schools, but we are going to pilot this with your permission, of course, and your approval during this November election, uh, general election. We are going to try to go into four, four different uh, school districts, and before you, you will see that we are uh, already have approval for the uh, Far San Juan Alamo School District. And uh, McAllen is, of course, very interested, as uh, we are also trying to get approval with the Edinburgh Consolidated Independent School District, as well as IDEA. So we are trying to go into their high schools. We're trying to get our seniors and anyone who is of voting age to get out there and start voting as soon as they are of voting age. And uh, so we're going to pilot this with their help. And uh, so we'll be coming on August 12th. We'll be presenting this. Uh, idea to you and hopefully we will get this on on the road and we will be of course moving forward and trying to get into all the high schools so that we will be getting everyone interested in voting and making sure that as soon as they're of, they're of age that they will utilize this very very important um, honor which is voting so I wanted to get you updated on that we'll present this on August 12th okay any questions on that I was just going to go to the locations on uh, the one in Elsa. Did you get the information on that? Yes, sir. We uh, have changed that. And so the next item, of course, is discussion, consideration. And if you uh, would like to approve, if not, I will bring it back on August the 12th for the approval of the, first of all, the early voting sites, which is the very first item here. And uh, the changes from the primary are as follows. We have been contracted to run uh, Edinburgh CISD, La Via, Monte Alto and Valley View. So from the primary, we have added these early voting sites. Okay, so the first page is early voting and these are the sites that are added. These are the only changes from the primary. So that's the number one. But the one on election day, you changed that too? Yes, sir, that would be number two and we did change it and okay. we will discuss that in a moment. But as far as changes from the primary, all we did was add these sites because they are um, contracted to run, and so these are the sites that we add if, in fact, they are having an election. And what are, where, where are they going to be located, the sites? We have got uh, Edinburgh asked for the, their administration building, La Via at the administration building, Monte Alto at the community center, and Valley View at the fifth grade campus, which is where right. they always hold them. But Edinburgh also had asked and to have uh, mobile voting sites? Yes, sir, and they are holding their uh, school board meeting today and they will make a decision today. They have not finalized that yet. All right. Have you contacted the other school, send a letter out to the other we school? Are, we are working on that uh, as we work on the mobile unit. That is still not finalized, so that's why I didn't to, present you this. You need to send that letter out, otherwise yes, you're sir, not going to have time or they're not going to have time. We're working respond. on that, sir. We're working on that. We needed to finalize this first and we're working on that. So, any questions on this? Would you all like to vote on this now, or would you like to table it? Nothing has changed from the primary, as I said, except we've added these sites. Vote for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Item number two, discussion, consideration, and approval of election day sites for the November 4th, 2014 general election. And uh, Commissioner Cuellar, as we mentioned, the only uh, change is that we are moving 
from the JFK site to the fire station in Elsa. And that, of course, will become the permanent site now uh, where we use the Elsa fire station as an early voting site, and we will now use the Elsa fire station as the permanent Permit. election day site. And that's the only change from the, um, for the election day sites. Okay. Motion so approval. if you would like to. Those okay. in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Item 16, our budget office. Judge, judge, for yes. the record, 15B, there is no action. All right. Morning, Judge Commissioner Sergio Cruz, Department of Budget Management. Item 16A is approval of the business associate agreement with Brown & Brown uh, Lone Star Insurance Services, uh, DBA Olimo Insurance. Uh, this is basically just an agreement with our uh, uh, health insurance consultant uh, regarding uh, some changes in, in the, some of the uh, information sharing uh, that we have with them. And basically, just, it basically has them to, that they need to keep any information that they receive from us confidential. Um, I'm requesting approval. Move for approval. Second. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 16B1 is presentation and discussion on the 2014 uh, capital improvement uh, project request. Judge Commissioners, uh, we've handed out a, basically a list of projects that have been requested by the departments. We've been working with uh, the precincts and, and some of the departments as far as trying to get the CIP request. Right now, we have a, a total of basically $342 million in CIP project requests. Uh, again, earlier this year, we did do a refunding of Series 2004 and 2005, where we were able to free up roughly about a million dollars in our debt service uh, fund. Uh, so we just wanted to, to approach the court and see whether we would be going out for some type of issuance to maybe try to complete some of these projects. Uh, rough numbers right now that, that I was looking at was a uh, capacity of anywhere between 17 to 21 million. Uh, we did just receive the new certified values for uh, 2014, and we have forwarded them over to our financial advisors, so I know that they are crunching the numbers on that. I believe Mr. Hosa was, it, 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 he is here, but I, I think their, their staff is still crunching the numbers as far as trying to get a definite uh, amount. Uh, but I just wanted to, to get this to the court for y'all to start looking at the project, start uh, considering uh, which projects y'all would like to fund uh, and for what amount uh, as far as the court would, would want to go out for. Does the court have any questions or? Are, there, are these the 20 million that uh, you had been talking about that we could divide by five? 20, 20. The 2021 $20, million dollars. Yes, this is uh, in talking to the to the rest of the commissioners in the court. This is the dollar. The, I believe the the upper limit is 21 million. Yes. Yeah. This is the 21 million dollars we were talking yeah. about, Judge. All right. Does that include for the jail? The jail is included in here as far as a project. Again, we do have. Uh, we project that the jail ex expense will be somewhere uh, just a little bit over six million dollars. We have about 4.8, so there is a gap. Uh, we've discussed some options with our financial advisor as far as the utilization of that money. Uh, so we will be coming back for some recommendations to the court as far as how we do that. Uh, you know, do we use, uh, fund, fund the difference, what type of contingency do we plan? Uh, and then there are some operating expenses that we would anticipate during those renovations. So we would need to utilize some of those $4.8 million for those operating uh, contingencies and then basically issue out uh, additional funds. But yes, the, the 6.2 is included in this uh, and, and the, these projects. The 21 million. Those 4.8 were from the loss that we settled, no, Judge? Yes, correct. So it's you're asking 1.2 million for that? So uh, roughly, million. roughly about 1.4, but there's also some operating contingency that we oh, would have. There would be some right. displacement no, of some yeah. displacement of some inmates. So there could be increased room and board costs. There, there'll also have to be a temporary shutdown of the kitchen, so we would need to have some type of contingency for providing food to, to the inmates uh, during that time period. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at using some of those 4.8s for those types of operating expenses that we will incur during the renovation of this facility. Thank you. 
Yes, sir. The agenda item reads uh, 2014 capital improvement project requests. Correct. But the document says 2015 to, 2000, uh, to 2020. 2020, I'm sorry. It should be so uh, 14 a, to 19, yes. Yeah, we're trying to, to get a multi-year uh, CIP plan in place. Right. Uh, because anything that we do today as far as issuing debt will affect future years as far as our capacity in future years. So we need to keep that in mind as well. So when uh, are you going to come or it's going to be decided which one of these projects is going to be uh, funded? Because later on you'll come in and, yes. and you we'll, ask. We'll come back later on. As, far as, as soon as uh, the court determines how much they would like to go out for, uh, we would need to then prioritize those projects, identify those projects individually, uh, and, and then that way we can make sure that those projects are included in the the purpose of the COs. Do we need to take any of that 21 or whatever amount it is, million from the top to, to help uh, complete the amount needed for the jail renovations? Yeah. Yes, we, we would how, need how much are we going to do that? Uh, we have, we had talked about uh, utilizing, uh, putting some contingency, I think we had looked at last time about $3 million on the low end because we needed some contingency for, uh, for the project itself. Uh, and then the operating expense contingency that we would need. Uh, so that so would leave about 18? Roughly at, on, on the high end, yes. Is that the, what we had talked about, dividing by five, and then we, each one of us would decide what to spend uh, our respective share? If, that, if that's the court's desire, that you could uh, do that, and then just basically identify which of the projects is the ones that you uh, would then at that point uh, yeah, fund. Yeah, that's what we're looking at, Judge. We're looking at $20 million and then... Yeah. We can break it down. And now it's going to be about 18. Yeah. But does anybody have any concern, any problem with dividing it by five, and we each decide what to spend, what to spend our respective share on? No, we don't have any problems no. at all. Okay. The Judicial Commission will we'll work with each of the individual precincts to identify the projects within the CIP funds, which ones will be funded, um, and then we'll also uh, come back with some, some alternatives. We'll visit again with our financial advisors as far as, you know, determining that, that exact capacity based on the uh, revenue increases that we've had uh, during this last valuations and, and see how that will work and maybe even some other options for the court. All right, sir. Uh, item 16B2. Uh, I'm just going to request no action on that. That was in case there was some type of reimbursement resolution that the court needed to pass. I don't see that uh, being needed at this time, so I'm requesting no action on 16B2. Uh, 16C1 is approval of orders creating a solid waste disposal program uh, and the assessment of a $25 fee uh, for a 90-day permit uh, for rural and unincorporated residents of the County of Hidalgo. This is the sanitation permit fee that uh, we had discussed last week. Uh, again, we did go back and change the, the, the order. It is a 90-day permit. Uh, uh, that way, uh, depending on when they, when they purchase a permit, it'll be good for 90 days after that. Uh, so we're just requesting approval of that order. Oh, for approval? This is going to be starting January 1st, right? Uh, the effective date, if the court desires, I mean, I, I believe you were the only one that uh, mentioned uh, an effective date of January 1st, so we could have it uh, effective January 1st, yes. <clears throat> Second approval. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 16C2 is approval of the countywide solid waste citizen collection station rules. Uh, basically, this is just uh, uniform, uh, having uniform rules throughout the collection stations, basically limiting the type of vehicles that can come in uh, and dispose of waste. Uh, and also regulating the, the different types of waste that will be accepted at the collection stations. You know, uh, there's probably going to be some dump, some illegal trash dumping around the roads. I think we need to get a little more serious about mm -hmm. fines. Yeah, we need to get more aggressive on Bec that. More aggressive on that because you're going to see a lot of trash all over the place. Yes, we have been working with, with our legal uh, department, with uh, Josie Ramirez's office, uh, and also with Martin, uh, our environmental uh, Person and we are looking at seeing what other things we can do. Uh, maybe having some type of compliance monitors, not necessarily solid waste enforcement officers, but some other type of individuals that will be trained in uh, looking at the waste, uh, looking through it, and then if there is, if they identify some information, uh, utility bill, something like that. At that point, they would contact the solid waste enforcement officer of the respective precinct, and, and then that way the fees can be assessed. That way, we'll also work with the the JPs. We still uh, need to meet with them as far as making sure that these fines are, are assessed um, and also, you know, not, not dismissed. So we will be working on that. 
And approval on it? Yes, I would need approval of the of the citizen approval. the waste collection fee. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 16D1 is approval to accept the fiscal year 14 Edward Burns Memorial Justice Assistance Grant in the amount of $46,650. Approved. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item 16D2 uh, and 3 is approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor and appropriation of those funds for the fiscal year 2014 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant in the amount of $46,650. Approved. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item 16D4 is approval of the salary schedule. Approved. Second. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 16E1 uh, is approval of 2014 appropriation of funds uh, for the Precinct 3 uh, Road Maintenance Program 005 in the amount of $18,284.31. Move for approval. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Commissioner. Item 17, purchasing. Yes. Good morning. Martha Salazar for the Purchasing Department. 17A is requesting approval to declare the items listed in Exhibit A, Office Furniture, Equipment, and Vehicles, attached herein as surplus for the purpose of sale through auction scheduled for August the 14th in accordance with Texas Local Government Code 262-152-A-L, A1, I believe, and in the event, we'll need that first. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Continuing, and in the event no bids are received, B would be pursuant to Texas Local Government Code 263.151L and or 263.152A3, Commissioner's Court proceed to order any of the property to be destroyed or otherwise disposed of as worthless inasmuch as the sale of said Commissioner's Court of the sale that Commissioner's Court to undertook uh, under Section 1 at auction on August the 14th resulted in no bids. Approved. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. C is requesting authority to publish advertisement for the auction of surplus equipment and vehicles scheduled for August the 14th, including but not limited to seized, abandoned, and unclaimed property as additional and or necessary auctions. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next is item two, requesting ratification of renewal of independent audit services with Burton, McCumber, and Cortez, LLP, for fiscal year 2013, as option provided, as, as option provided under current agreement, and approve the 2014 fiscal year audit as also permitted under contract agreement under the same rates, terms, and conditions identified with contract number C-160. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Under the Executive Office, this is discussion applicable action of the following items for Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court in connection with delinquent tax collection services. A. Exercise Hidalgo County's option to issue and send the 30-day notice of non-renewal pursuant to current agreement section 6 for the current contract with Purdue Brandon Fiedler Collins Mott LLP in association with the law offices of John David Franz. Herein called the firm for the collection of delinquent taxes for Hidalgo County, thus expiring on 12 31 14. Second. Morning. Which one are you voting on? I have a, a. I have a, I have a, I have a concern, Judge. Well, That's comment. what's up first. Comment, basically, a uh, point of information that we're talking about 30 day notice or non renewal. Mm -hmm. the, the contract calls for a 30 day notice mm -hmm. of termination, not a non renewal. It actually calls for either one. I, uh, but, Marty, Marty, Mr. Listen to me. Let but, me tell you but, what, I, what I think I think it's fair. Why can't we just go out for, I mean, terminate the contract effective December 31st, 2014? Mm -hmm. Which this would do. Wait a minute. Yes. And then we have enough time for everybody, if, you know, the present or whatever it is, if they're going to get it next time or not. Because usually when they when they go in, the other company takes over January first, but they carry on to about May, June, July. They have well, six, six months. months. Six mm -hmm. months. Okay. Couldn't we? Couldn't they wrap up everything just in case a new firm comes in or not? Certainly. You know, they, they, they got six months right now, can't they? Okay, but the, let me go back to the question. I had the option on the 30-day notice to terminate. Yeah. Originally. That's what I'm originally, saying. I did have it. 
Mr. Crane, though, differs with my interpretation of the contract. I defer to him. He's telling me the way it reads, only the option of non-renewal is applicable. I read it as either one. That's why I had both. Not, 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 not renewal so. as, as it reads with John David Non renewal in, as, as the contract exists right now, or at least back. as the contract we have right now archived. They can come that in is and the bid. current agreement we have. But they can come back and bid a, as a different. Uh, oh, certainly. They, they, yes, sir. Yeah. They, Mark, Mark, they can if, certainly. If, if I may, my first concern was the fact that obviously we have an active contract until the end of the year. Right. Uh, yes. We got five months to go. I do agree the fact that because of the change and we have an association and we all learned that probably it would behoove the county never to have a contract with an association of. Certainly. Um, that was my first concern is that customary we would look at these items further down the year. But I understand uh, because of the situation uh, and, and obviously we're meeting every other week that we mm -hmm. start the process. Exactly, um, because so of the I'm RFP process. It. I'm all for what Commissioner Flotis is I mean, proposing. Start the process, let's go ahead and get the, you know, terminate the, I mean, finish the, con the year. Uh, is that mm -hmm. okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. I mean, and then first of the year, I mean, whoever gets a contract will get the contract. But they, we, need to, we need to go off Marty, this, right this now. would be uh, a valid A and B, right? The the that, that would is be that a combination of A and B. A and B. Mr. So you're saying allow her to terminate naturally at December 31? Correct. And then start the process to get a new firm? No, no, but, but go, ahead, go ahead and go out for bids right now. Right, and second. I have that option for you. Right. Go, go ahead and go out for bids right now and have enough time to, you know, if, you, you, you never know who's going to get it. I mean, That's if right. we, the present person, well, people right now can, if, if they don't get it, say next month or so, they have enough time to wrap up all their lawsuits or whatever it is. Mm. Marty. Correct, but I believe the contract states that upon termination they have six months. Upon expiration they have six months in which to wrap up any litigation, any collections. That's Correct. That's the way the contract. Contract. This is what the contract so says. This would be at the end of 12-31-2014 they have six months to wrap up I, I, all their business. That's yes. Correct. Now the, the county has, has exercised its option to terminate under the same contract once before and that was in 2008. In August of 2008, because the current agreement with the same firm was to expire December of 2008, the county on August 19th of 2008 terminated the agreement and exempted and took action to exempt them again and give them a longer term contract. Right. Marty, so it's we, been we done are, before. Marty, that's we're what not, happened we're then, not remember? terminating any contract. No, I'm that's just right. telling you, it's right. the same yeah. agreement, but in that option, it was non-renewal notice, it was termination. Okay. I'm okay. just saying it's been exercised both ways. It's, it's going to be terminated just, because the, on the old contract it reads for due and whatever. Well, and then, and can then, I ask a question though? And let, in, in the past we've done name changes before. Uh, when there's the change in, in, in partnerships, we brought an item on mm -hmm. the agenda that clarifies that. So it hasn't been formed to the county to do that either. So I don't think that even though we have a contract with an association, you can bring an item next week and, and remove the association and based we, on... If that would be uh, an moment. item submitted the by the company. Now, now the, o the only other concern that I have, Marty, is that I think it would have been... Like, when I read the item, I thought, <laughs> explore all options. Obviously, in the existing contract, you have an option for renewal for an additional And year, I had them on, Commissioner. I, I had know, but all it, options But the on. thing is, it's not presented here at court No, as an sir, option, they were removed. Although it is an option on the contract right yes, now. Yes, sir, so, and I had it on. You know, it so that, that's, that's my concern. There were six options on the original caption. Right, and, and so, you know, I, but I believe in the objectiveness. I do believe we should go out, and, and we should have done it seven years ago. We should, well, I think we did it seven years ago. We haven't done it in a long time. We did time. it eight years ago. There you go, eight. Now, I think it would be great to do it for the benefit of the taxpayer because of the fact that you look at the percentage of people that go delinquent. You know, if you, if you put two firms competitively and you do an RFP slash With Q, Q with qualification. Okay. Uh, then you give the best bang for your buck for your taxpayer at the end of the Certainly. day. The least amount of effect. While we're in the eve of potentially charging a hospital tax and increasing on sanitation, I mean, doing a sanitation fee. So I think it'd be cool. So I'm in agreement with the board if that's what they see fit. The only thing that was some initial concerns that I had had that all options weren't presented to the board. Correct. So let, let me make sure I understand it before we vote. We're not going to terminate. It's going to uh, It's going to expire, expire on its own term. Year, at the, the end, end of, of the this year. year. We're just not going to renew. Well, if that's what you want, there is an option to renew. 
for an additional well, uh, year. No. So we'll just go for bids. But okay. it's the, fir the contract we have now is the way it's written. I, I, I believe the consensus is to go out for requests for proposals, okay. so thereby and that by, option is there. So by Marty, necessity, we're, vote we're on not A and B? No, just on, on B, because there's no action on A. A, A, you would vote on A, and, and then and you would, you, two options are presented to you on how to engage. One of them would be B, which is what you, I, I am hearing from the board, from the commissioner's court, mm -hmm. that you wish to solicit and advertise no, and that publish. Would be, that would be my motion, A and B. But Marty, no. but the, the way I read the contract is you give them a 30-day notice to not renew, but on December the 1st. On December the 1st, you will tell them we're not okay. going to re, uh, exercise our option to renew and allow it to lapse naturally. Okay. M Mr. Fracio, there's a sentence here. It says, absent notice of non-renewal. Correct. Or notice that the contract has been extended, Correct. the contract will uh, automatically renew. If we don't send the notice. I know, but what I'm saying, that on December the 1st, you notify him that you're not going to renew or extend the contract, then it's going to terminate December 31. How right. do you proceed may to I, do an uh, RFP if you leader? still may have a current that? contract? May I address that? There's nothing in the contract that says we can't give advance notice. Exactly. And we can do it before December 1st. Mm. Correct. But the and, problem and with that uh, statement being made, I agree with, but we cannot call it a 30-day notice because it's obviously 120 right. days or something. We're going well, to do it now. It doesn't, it doesn't preclude you from taking action. the action, action and sending mm -hmm. the notice. Let me tell you, okay. I believe it's appropriate in this respect because how do you then open the door to go out on RFP if you haven't sent notice of non-renewal? Right. So if, when are you intending yeah, to send the notice? notice? You can give well, it yes, advance it's it's well, No, the I'll question is when, you, when, when, yes, when oh, are you going I to can send, send out it, the letter? I can send it November 30th. All right, so it's a 30-day notice. Yes, you're just giving me the action, and that gives me gives you all the action on B to start the process on, mm -hmm. on RFP. Yeah. You would yeah. have a firm telling you, how are you all going out if, we don't if you have an option to renew. Right, so we're not going to be involved. It wouldn't give in, us enough time. We're not going to be involved in any selection until after November? Yeah. Well, until, no, when, uh, no, because you can select prior to that effective 1-1-15. Right. Uh, but effective till January. You need to have an, a firm in place. Infection. You're right. Effective 1 1 15. That's but, why you're starting it see, now. Marty, Remember, we're only meeting every two weeks. You know, this whole situation that we're getting, uh, that we're talking about, relates to that 30 day issue. I agree with Mr. Ufrasio, that relates to termination. That non renewal, we can do it 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, whenever we want. You want, uh, Judge, but how does that then open the option? To advertise, to advertise. If, you, if you haven't already declared the intent. Judge. May I well, kind of clear this up? Judge. I can clear this up very quickly. Under the original term of the agreement, until December 31st, 2014, you do not have a convenience-only termination. You can only terminate for breach, okay? What Marty's tar talking about is that, that there is a provision, she read part of the sentence, that says prior to... 1115, you can give a notice stating that you are not renewing the contract. And I agree with Brody right. with that, but it's not a 30 day notice, otherwise, it won't take effect until December 1st. If we wanted to take effect where we can start doing it That's now, true. make it a 90 day notice or, or 120 day notice, uh, whatever you want to Judge, write. the notice, the, 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 that Article 6 says 30 days. But what, what the judge is saying, Marty, it, there's is... There's nothing wrong with doing listen, it prior. What, listen to what, Steve, what the judge way. is saying is the reference to a 30-day notice, you're both correct. The reference to a 30-day notice is not 30 days. We can give notice 90 days, 120 exactly. days before, and it's still effective under the paragraph to tell them we're not renewing the contract. Correct. But we cannot send out an RFP until they have notice we're not going to be renewing the contract. In other yeah, words, right. But you can give me authority to start the process. Because That's I cannot bring you the RFP procurement packet until August 12th. That's Marty, your next. Marty. In other words, we cannot go, we cannot, if it, 28 days, that means automatically it will be, be renewed, right? Right. If, if you said nothing, if yeah, you 28 nothing days, yes, it passes you are 30 correct. Days, mm -hmm. Automatically it's renewed. But, but I think mm -hmm. the 30 days that, that the contract talks about is. 30 it, days or more, it, probably. It, no, if you, don't, if you do not notify him, said the contract is going to expire naturally on December 31, 2014. 
if you don't give him a notice, it's going to go on a month to month. That's Correct. basically what he's saying. Correct. The 30 days. You got to give him a 30 and day notice. I don't notice. believe that's the intention of the court from, from what mm -hmm. I'm hearing. Right. Which, in essence, is then tantamount to not taking your one year let, option. Let me to ask renew. the court when do we want to start? Uh, uh, I want to make a motion on A and B, so I don't know when Marty is think we I, need to. I still would need to bring you back the packet on the next well, commissioner's well, court meeting. And, and the question I'm going to have is when you go out for RFPs, what's going to be the composition? I mean, obviously, we're in this situation because we don't have a 30 day clause out. Number one, we're in this situation because we have an association contract, which, again, we learned a lot that that's not the benefit, that's not in the benefit of the county. Uh, the, it did create a situation. It, it for the created county. a situation. Sure. So I think at the end of the day, the county, well, I mean. You also need to recall that by going out on an RFP, the county's not obligated to award at no time. But I need the, to, to bring the packet to you, get yeah, it approved, get it then you start advertising. Get a note, you know, get your, your committee assigned, get a date for those statements of those uh, proposals to be received. This is because the, if that is the intent of the court, you still need someone in place 1 1 15. Let me ask whoever the, that may be. Hold on, Marty. Let me ask the members of the court when they want to start this process of advertising for uh, this contract. The sooner the better, no? Yeah. Okay, so that would mean sometime in August. Yes, latter so part of August. We have to give notice of non renewal prior to us starting that process, correct? Otherwise, we have, we have to notify them that we're not going to renew their, their contract. I, I don't see, uh, well, I, I'll take your direction. However, you can send notice saying the court has opted not to renew the contract and it will expire 12 31 14. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what yes, the contract says. Uh, well, the, but not the 30 day. The hang no, up that I have is. We're sending a notice of non renewal period. All right. Okay. As long as we do it before we start hiring a new company, we're okay. Well, certainly. If we hire a new company. Correct. Well, that, yeah. that raises another That's question. That's true. Mm -hmm. If you don't hire a new company, then the argument to the other side is you don't send the notice of non renewal prior to your decision either to award or not award a new contract. Well, but if, if it's, a new, if it's the same company, the it's not the contract that's written mm -hmm. right now. So that's, that would be the, the, the benefit, that it would have a contract not including that phrase of the firm. Yeah. But again, you can bring that to court next week and clear that I'm going to bring it on the 12th for approval of the packet. Of the packet. All right. So the motion would be A and B or... But the well, problem with going A and B, aid, Commissioner, is need... that 30 days notice. Uh, oh, no, yeah, but just, just so it's going to be a notice of non-renewal. I understand, Judge. A it's just a notice of non-renewal. Yeah. Instead of 30 days, just a notice. Take period. out the 30 days and just send right. a notice of non-renewal. Of non-renewal. Right. May I have a vote? Sec I'm in second, right? Yeah. All right. As, as stated, to, by taking out the 30 days, Commissioner? Yeah. All right. Those in favor of the motion as made and seconded indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Is that A and B? A and yes, B. A and B. Taking so out the 30-day. 30 30 no days. action on C or D. No. Nope. Going on C, Precinct 1, C1, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements you, under you Texas say, Local yeah. Government I'm Code, Section 262024A4, a professional service. That last uh, motion, the, the vote was unanimous for the record. Yes, sir. Uh, I need an exemption approval. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B is presentation of the scoring grid of the three firms, that being Lefevre at 85, Javier Hinojosa 74, Perez Consulting at 80. Does the court wish to rank them in the order of their scores? Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Authority for the purchasing department to negotiate a professional uh, Second. contract Second. with Lefevre. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D1 is for Precinct 2, requesting acceptance and approval work authorization 9 with an estimated cost of $3,060.15 as submitted by Rabbi Kistner. Contract number 351 for construction materials testing for Precinct 2, uh, Owasa Road, paving improvement project. Second. No, that's further down. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I apologize. It 
probably is the one, uh, Mr. Ferratu. For the record, it's not Owasa Road. It is Moonlight Avenue. Uh, Moonlight. Moonlight Avenue. Okay, to... item two. Approval of the following invoices listed for previously approved purchase orders for operating expenses exceeding $7,500. That is the invoice is stated to Argendegui, $8,056.49. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item three, approval of the following requisitions listed for operating expenditures exceeding 75. Those are two Frontera materials and uh, for Frontera materials, two invoices listed on the agenda. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item E1 <laughs> is for precinct four and generally for Hidalgo County. Requesting approval of an order granting an exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code 262-024-A7, an item that can only be obtained from only one source. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B is approval of a sole source declaration for AEP Texas uh, for those uh, upgrades, lights, equipment, transformer upgrades, and other related services and the execution of a contribution and aid construction agreement with AEP Central Company commencing with Precinct 4 for the site described and detailed in the document and issuance of purchase order if necessary and applicable, including authority for the county treasurers to issue any check after the review and processing procedures are completed by the auditor. Move for approval. Second. Yeah. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. C is authority and approval for Hidalgo County departments, programs, and or agencies to purchase future related services offered only from AEP Texas company and its sole sourced herein and execution of the contr contribution and aid of construction agreements on an as needed basis. Yes, sir, they're the only ones who can provide the lights and the service together. It's Move. very difficult. Move for approval. Second. Monopoly. <laughs> in essence, yes. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is correction of agenda item 29577 approved on November 22nd, 11, to replace subconsultant pursuant to Article 14 for the current agreement number 234 with LNG Engineering. That was for work authorization with LNG, reflecting the change from Leonardo Garza Jr. and Associates to engage the services of Professional Appraisal Services Incorporated. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item three, acceptance of approval of the final negotiated professional appraisal services agreement with George Jaime Salazar II, DBA Appraisal House for the job specific project appraisal services for the sale of properties within located within precinct four. Move for approval. Second. Marty, who did the uh, negotiation four, on this one? A contracts manager in my office in connection with uh, direction from Precinct 4. So I did not. You, you were not involved? Okay. No, sir. Thank you. All right, on number Item three, four uh, is those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Mar Marty, before you move on, uh, number two, Lionel, did he withdraw or you couldn't uh, agree in the, on a price? In the, he is, he's overwhelmed with the amount of work that he has, and this is a consensus on both parties <laughs> that they need, he needs to uh, allow someone else to do it. All right. At, at least that's what the backup informed us. All right. Scheduling, calendar, and workload. Uh, acceptance and approval of AIA Document 101, forms of agreement for Hidalgo County owner and JCon Construction awarded contractor in the in the amount of one million three hundred fifty thousand dollars for Precinct Four's construction of the Lynn San Manuel Emergency Services facility. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item F1, this is uh, requesting approval of supplemental agreement number two to the current agreement number 133 with Chanin Engineering for the Adult Detention Center and Law Enforcement Facility Repairs to reflect the extension of time. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now for number two, I need to bring up my backup here so that I can give you the list. You should have it in your backup on the list of, this is the request by the Sheriff's Department directly that they be permitted to engage the services of the construction manager 
for that uh, rescheduled work on the roof that's going to occur at the sheriff's office in uh, after hurricane season and yet the weather will also permit to be a little cooler and let me give you the options here oh, yeah, I, I thought they, they already had a construction manager they did have a construction manager and at the request of a previous administration that construction management agreement was terminated and now with uh, the intricacy of the day-to-day -day operations once the work starts now this is just to oversee the work they feel it's necessary and uh, let me see are you looking for three, three names I'm looking for the, the list, which I know is here. Um, I think there's more than 10 firms. And here it is, the pool of construction. Okay, you have a number of firms, you have 14. Let me read them to you. And you should have them also as part of your backup. Prodigy, out of McAllen. HOV Services, Meridian Consulting Group out of San Antonio. Dos Logistics out of Westlaco. SMB Infrastructure out of McAllen. Half Associates out of McAllen. Dan and Baum Engineering out of McAllen. R.H. Shackelford out of San Antonio. Broadus and Associates out of McAllen, they have a local office. Tedzi Infrastructure, out of Mission. Highmark Construction, out of McAllen. Guzman and Munoz Engineering, out of Mercedes. Cortran Engineering, out of McAllen. Lefevre Environmental and Management Consulting, out of McAllen. And Isaguirre Engineering, out of Mission. You can pick, at a minimum three, you can do more. You can do half of the list if you wish. It's up to you. So I you want to, to pick, pick uh, Prodigy for one of them. He was part of that already, no? Yeah, okay. Prodigy, we we'll number one, and then uh, Isaguirre, number two. And I don't know who else, uh, Mr. Commissioner Palacios. Was it Aguirre? You said? Uh, Aguirre, Aguirre Engineering. Aguirre. Aguirre. Okay. Isaguirre with an I. Yeah. Uh, you can throw in Broadus. I mean, they've done that kind of work. Uh, yes, sir. And well. they're also on the state contracts. Yeah. Now, this is just the selection of who's going to be graded. Right. Okay, that's okay. So that's action on A. Can we have a vote on that? That those are the three nominees. Second. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Isaguirre with an I, not a Y. What? Pardon? Broadus and Associates. Uh, selection and uh, assignment of the evaluation committee. I need uh, the five names, please. Five. Marcos Lopez out of my office. Marty, do you have a list of those firms? I have it here for you to review, to see. Yeah. You want to add one, Judge? Another? I'm trying to remember, and uh, there's so many of them. Yeah. Precinct four is Marcos Lopez. No, the one I was thinking about is not here. Mingo here, or he left. Okay. Raul Lozano, uh, he loses his, his shot. Be Mingo or Mona? <laughs> Mino, Mingo left. Is he here? Okay. <laughs> Judge, you don't wish to add someone? Uh, no, I'm just going to appoint Yolanda. I'm not going to suggest anybody else. I okay. don't have All right. the name that I needed. Commissioner Flores? M Mingo? Mona. Mona. Okay. Mingo no tiene tiempo. And Commissioner Palacios? Commissioner. Eh? Mingo's right outside. Oh, he lost his chance. Where is he at? He's on Call the phone. <laughs> and I will ask Commissioner. Let me see Mingo's here. Hold on. Yeah, he's out there on the phone. He's been gone for 20, 30 minutes. He's staying out right, right outside the glass. He's on a business call. <laughs> here he comes. <laughs> Mr. Verriad, please step forward, sir. Mingo, your attention. You were the number one uh, lineman for the La Jolla in 1968. Good morning, uh, Judge, Commissioner. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just wondering if you wanted to serve or we get Mona because yes. you were gone. You yes, wanted to be on the committee? 
Monday? Sir, do you want you want to be part of it? Yes. Okay, then we'll put Mingo then. Well, uh, whatever he says, I'm agreeing. No, 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 no. Mingo. <laughs> Mingo. Mingo. No. I'm sorry, Commissioner. The politically correct answer. <laughs> don't, don't, don't drop the ball, Mingo. Don't no, I was taking ball. a call for, for the precinct, so. Okay. Uh, yes, I agree, Commissioner. Oh, that one. So let's put him on to uh, Marty. Okay. And I will ask Commissioner uh, Palacios. Tito Patal Palacios before the end of the day. Okay, may I have a vote? Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Let me re repeat the names. Raul Lozano for Precinct 1, to be determined by Precinct 2, Mingo Villarreal for Precinct 3, Mo uh, Marcos Lopez for Precinct 4, and Yolanda Chapa for County Judge. Can I pick for Precinct 2? Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> Item uh, G. WIC presentation acceptance and approval of the Second Amendment to the current lease agreement with Joel Carr LLC for the lease of office space in McAllen to reflect an increase of square footage to 4,625 with no added, with the added space at no charge to the WIC program. Move for approval. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Commissioner uh, yeah, Tito. Uh, you, would you please uh, provide me a name for the for the um, grading and scoring of a c construction manager uh, for the jail's uh, renovation of the roof? Uh, the Life. sheriff, Raúl Raúl Silguero. Thank you very much. That is all I have. May I just say something? Um, today, 42 years ago, I was a bride. And, al and although the journey ended early, he was one heck of a citizen. My husband, George Jaime Salazar. All right, next, uh, next item is the WIC program. We got it. We got, we got it. that one. Okay, we uh, pursuing a 551071 and 072. Need a motion to proceed to executive session? Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Guerra. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Uh, Judge Commissioners, if it pleases the court, I'd like to make a correction. I've been informed under item 17A1, which was under purchasing department, um, there, uh, there was a scheduled uh, date given of August 14, 2014. I'd like to correct that. It's actually August 13, 2014. August 13, 2014. And this has to do with the Office Furniture and Equipment and Vehicles 
uh, that were asked for surplus. Again, August 13th, 2014 is the correction. Steve, did they need to... We need action we, for that, Steve? Move for approval? Yes. Uh, we need to uh, acknowledge rescind action rescind, before. Rescind, rescind before. Good rescind and then... Right. Okay, rescind action on... 17A1. Second. All right. All right. 17A1... Uh, okay, hold on. Let's go to the vote. I'm sorry. 17A1, B and C. Yes, because it's all related. And then... Uh, those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And then the action uh, acknowledging that it is August 13th 2014, 17A1, A, B, and C. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Judge Commissioners, under open session, item 19, there is no action under real estate acquisition, no action under pending potential litigation. Claim of Geico Direct Insurance Company. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make a uh, settlement offer in the amount of $2,093.04. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, item D, claim of Clemente Alfaro. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $75. For approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Claim of Gabriela Ventura. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $4,469.86. And if accepted, Mr. Ufrase, the check would be made payable to the Almaraz Law Firm. The whole thing. approval. Second. The whole thing? Those in yeah. favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yes, sir. The uh, whole thing, the 4,469.86. Need a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, thank you, gentlemen.